Hi guys, welcome to another Friday flip. I'm Alicia from my work basket. I'm recording in a slightly different video setting today that I'm hoping kind of minimizes any rockiness. So Friday flip is when I flip through a random vintage magazine for my collection, usually a craft one because that's most of what I have. And today I picked this all new women's world money savers family crafts. Um, I've mentioned in a previous video, I am looking for a specific pattern that a friend of mine and I saw in a Facebook group of like weird vintage stuff. Um, and so I'm working through my stash trying to find this pattern and I saw this one and I was like, this one's going to be a Friday flip, not just a random flip through. So this is April, 1975. It originally cost 75 cents here on the cover. You can make hundreds of dollars at home with ideas like these. Meet the women who created them. Egg scratching revive. This is a sentimental heirloom plaque. I actually love these flowers. I've done things like this before in my house. Happy times with a memory server tray. And of course, the classic vintage bleach bottle purse. What would you see if you watched Jackie by day and by night? Here it is. Jacqueline by Ron G Galella. G A lavish book of stunning photographs and fascinating text. Great news. If you want to look younger, look young forever, 10 to 15 years younger instantly. Medical tests prove it's the Traynor facelift. And you get to try it in the privacy of your own home. I gotta say, chances are this is not legit. But look at that poor lady. I mean, like, even her eyebrows completely change. If that's the same lady at all, that's pretty impressive. Whatever the heck this thing is. All right. A more beautiful you begins with your next bath. And they start with someone already young and beautiful in the bath to start with. I mean, sure, if you look like that when you get started. It's a woman's world. This is about craft shows. 112 proven spare time money-making opportunities guaranteed to add 50 to $250 a week to your income. Guaranteed, they are all scams. Collector's Corner, she is hooked on button hooks. Now, I pretty much guarantee you, anyone who's watching this that collects vintage craft stuff or has vintage craft stuff probably has button hooks. I myself have gotten, I think, about five or six over the years just from different craft bundles. Um, like, I have some like these that you might see here. That's kind of the classic one. I have some like this style here. Um, I have some like this style here. But button hooks are one of those things that just seems to find their way into craft bundles and sewing baskets. And, and so if you collect any variety of vintage craft stuff or you buy crafty lots, you tend to end up with some button hooks. But that lady collects them. Here's more information about... The craft shows these are all painted stones stone paintings oh this one looks wild okay at last portable roller action for home use roll slim slim down firm up the easy better new way and it literally is like rollers on a plate that's how you do your buttocks your buster arms I hope these are coming across clear. I can't really tell on the screen. Your legs, your tummy and waist by doing... Um, I forget the name of that where you kind of slide out with almost like a modern ab roller. Also, massages. Choose over nine ways for your own individual figure problems. Oh, that one. That's classic. That's like... That's half the fun of old magazines with these classic old ads. But it literally looks like two paint rollers on a tray... I don't know what happens if you're too chubby to put the tray around you because I'll be honest, I don't think I would fit in there like she is in there. And I'm not exactly a large woman. Um, the bulletin board. 
This is just little you write in for help. This lady needs the rules for playing Karome. Karome? I think it's pronounced Karome. The Feminine Fix-It Handbook. Because you couldn't just use a man's book. Some of the subtle sexism that you see in these old things is just... All right. Bright idea of the month. The Hubba Hubba Hubcap. While running my little beagle last August, I stumbled over an old discarded hubcap, and after picking myself up, the idea for a hubcap planter came to mind almost immediately. Arriving home, I knocked out the dents, removed the grease and grime, and washed it. Then I painted it with three coats of enamel primer, and when it was thoroughly dry, gave it three more coats of brown enamel. The black decorative chain was purchased at a hardware store. Some hubcaps already have holes in them that could be used to run the chain through. If they don't, I drill three holes or so near the top edge to fasten the chain. A florist here suggested I send a picture of my hubcap planter to your magazine so that others might do the same. Now, most modern hubcaps would not work for this, but that would actually be kind of cute if you found like the vintage old style like that. You can get extra money for sending in your bright ideas. Here is an old-time radio, transistorized, only three and a half inches high. That's actually really cute. That's almost, I mean, that's about real size right there. Maybe actually smaller than that. I think we actually have had one of these. There's also the old-time music, just a music box. I think we've actually had one of these, or I've seen it at, like, auction or somewhere. It was just a cute little thing. This little old lady makes money at home. So can you. Her dream is to open a gift shop. In the meantime, her living room will have to do. And she sets up shop. I actually have or have had in the past a neighbor who did something like this. Periodically, she would, you'd see signs out in the neighborhood, you know, craft show. And it's just in her house. You walk in her front door and she's got it set up right in her living room. And they're very retro styled crafts. But she makes all makes goodies all year and so she advertises her home bazaars in the local newspaper and on signs and shop windows. Here's the spring flowers that last. So first they start out with like um these are apparently the same type of flowers, but with dried greenery, or you can do the fabric ones like on the cover and just create a bouquet. I'm not going to lie, I kind of want to make some of those. I've had some before that were felt, and I actually had them in my house for years, and then I sold them in like a buy, sell, trade type group. This is, oh, interesting. So we've seen these now. You can buy this type of, you know, fake flower at anywhere. Dollar Tree has these, and usually they're little styrofoam bowls, but this is actually pearl tapioca. So like giant pearls of tapioca that they dye and glue. That's pretty neat. Um, dip individual pieces of tapioca in glue. Okay, so first you roll it in glue. Then you add more as needed. Continue on page 64. And then it looks like you just paint them. That's pretty neat. I mean, I don't necessarily know that tapioca... I mean, tapioca is dry. I was thinking it might bring like bugs or mice, but it is dry. Although right now it may be tricky to find pearl tapioca. Pearl tapioca is very similar to stuff that's in like boba. And I know there's like a boba shortage. So I've heard there's a boba shortage. I shouldn't say I know there's a boba shortage. I've heard that there's a boba shortage. In praise of spring beautiful flowers, if he sends you an Easter bouquet or a corsage, dry it and enjoy it for ages. And it's just information about how to dry bouquets and reuse them. The fragrance of grandma's roses. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, so this is about rosebud beads, which I have, I'm pretty sure I've actually made them, but I have a bracelet made from them that my husband purchased for me. If I remember, I'll grab it and I'll do a quick clip of it at the end. They're really neat. So it really is rosebuds dried and like pressed into these little, they're really, and they do actually smell some. Now these, they mix them with like mace and allspice and cloves. So it probably sells more so spicy than rosy. Mine actually does have a faint smell of roses. But that's a fun thing that people have done. Reliving happy times with a memory server tray. And they took all the memorabilia from a trip 
and hooked it down on a tray. Probably just classic decoupage. Aside from a large metal tray and memorabilia you want to display, most of the things needed to complete a memory server tray can be found right around the house. The only things you might not have on hand are metal primer and flat or semi-gloss paints. So they actually started with a classic like toll painted tray. You can still pick these up pretty cheap at like auctions and stuff. So that's kind of a neat idea. And they just paint it and glue on their stuff. A weighty approach to comfy pillows. Out of, a Victorian, out of the Victorian era comes a really super idea for a pillow that stays put where you need it. So it looks like based on the materials needed, they put a weighted strip on the pillow and it has drapery weights in it. Thread white tape through the two drapery weights. I, I thought I was picturing it as a weight. Apparently it's like a weight. Um, I was picturing it more as like pellets. I've never heard of a drapery weight. I was kind of guessing. I'll be honest. We have like, I don't know, basic curtains. I don't know if people really do drapes anymore. Um, I have not. I'm not a drapery person. So thread white tape through the two drapery weights. Take the two long strips and with white sides together, stitch narrow ends of long strips together. Um, place threaded weights just above the seam. Machine stitch both long sides. And continue on page 54. I, you know, I hate when every single project is continued on a different page. So I'm guessing that you essentially have this. This panel on the back has weights in it. I'm, I'm guessing. Um, that is kind of handy, but I don't think most people... I mean, I personally, I don't want to say most people. I don't want to speak for everybody. I personally don't care if my pillows stay in exactly the same place. They get tossed around because that's kind of the point. Sorry, I'm trying to read what it's... Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't kind of read it and discuss at the same time. I'm guessing there's a weighted strip in there. I was trying to kind of explain how it works, but the directions aren't making sense to me at the moment. A box for all your treasures. Old books are a dime a dozen. For a few cents more, you can have an elegant treasure box. So they did a classic. They slowly cut the pages out of an old book. And it is true that you can get old books for almost nothing. I will tell you, I have done this before. And you're going to want some exacto knives and probably quite a few of them. Doing a whole book takes a long time. You're going to want to go just a few pages at a time. And you can see theirs is not super duper smooth because it will be very hard to get it super duper smooth. So it's best to kind of want it. It's best if you're okay with it looking a little, I don't want to say rough, but it's not going to be perfectly, perfectly smooth unless you get really obsessive with it. And then they just glued it and you just glue every, like all the pages together. Stop! Don't throw away that old bleach bottle. That'll be your cry in the neighborhood once you get hooked on making these gay little summer purses. These are actually super cute. Now, if I remember correctly, this uses like a different shape of bleach bottle that you can't really find anymore. Um, they used a one and a half gallon size Clorox bottle. It takes five bleach bottles to make the purse. But I feel like when I've seen these in other magazines and they show the bottle, I feel like it's not the same very rounded bottle that you buy today. If anybody knows otherwise, please correct me in the comments because I certainly don't want to give out wrong information. Um, I feel though that they've been rounded out over the years based on what I've kind of seen pictures of and otherwise this would be kind of neat to do. For all the happy couples, they make this wedding plaque. Nothing could delight the newlyweds more than their own invitation mounted on a wooden plaque. So you can pretty much picture exactly how they did that. The art of Pennsylvania Dutch egg scratching. You know, I got to be honest. I don't think this, this doesn't happen much. I don't think I've ever done egg scratching. 
that one might be new to me. Um, I have done the Pasanke eggs where you do the wax and the dye and the wax and the dye. These kind of seem like they're the opposite where you actually wrap. Let me see. Um, I'm wondering if it's a different name for the same thing or if it's different all the way around. It looks like they are, in fact, scratched in. You can see here. Miss Altaus uses hat pins to scratch in her egg designs. Her mother used a paring knife, but any sharp instrument will do. So that is different than what I've done before. I've never done egg scratching. Um, considering the number of eggs I break, trying to do like Pasanke pas eggs, um... <laughs> I'm going to tell you a funny side story of why I struggle to say Pasanke. Um, it's like a family joke that when my mom introduced it to me, I have called them Pasanke eggs. Just like being ridiculous. My, I don't know, for 20 years, I don't know. I was probably a young teenager when my mom and I did the eggs together. And I just have always called it Pasanke to be fun, to be funny, just like to be ridiculous. So the eggs I have done are actually called Pasanke but I will always struggle to say it appropriately because I've always said it ridiculously on purpose. <laughs> so uh, pay attention to what you're saying, kids. You never know when you might need to say it the right way. So these are in fact dyed. And then you take a dyed egg and you go over it with a sharp instrument. And that's awesome. That's really neat. But I have broken an amazing amount of eggs trying to do Pasanke eggs. And so I don't even want to imagine what I would do trying to scratch through the eggs that would um I'd probably scratch through as opposed to making a nice little design long after Easter is gone this talks about different Easter plants and how to care for them I gotta say this seems really this is a surprisingly good picture for a 1975 magazine and it is only black and white which helps a lot of things in these vintage magazines the photos don't always come across very well but this is a really pretty photo a lifesaver doll, quick and easy basket stuffers. So this is the lifesaver doll. It literally is a tube of lifesavers with like yarn feet, yarn arms, little styrofoam ball head. Now, the funny thing about lifesavers is I only ever see the tubes like that now at Christmas where you can buy the box of them. You know, sometimes I'm at the store and I'm like, it would be kind of neat to buy like a tube of lifesavers. Don't really do that anymore. So here's some other different, I'm sure all the titles will be on another page. That looks like a rock or an egg. I've actually done something similar to this for my dad as a gift when I was little. I think they still have it on their shelf. I can't, this is obviously supposed to be a bunny, but there's like no detail to it. I can't really tell what's going on there. Same with this guy. I can't even tell what that's supposed to be. It just looks kind of like a lump. This elephant is adorable. And then a pom-pom bee. And then I guess all the, yeah, the, this magazine, everything is considered continued on another page. So all the others, their name and what they make them is continued on a different page. Pop in the mouth. Easy chocolate goodies to tuck in your Easter baskets. Oh, I wonder what these are. Okay, so... Velvet leaps are something with pecans, chocolate pieces. I'm trying to see if we can figure out what each one of these is. Um, if desired, press a hole. So that must be these guys. Press a whole pecan nut into the top of each ball before chilling. So these must be the velvet leaps. Touchdowns. I'm guessing are these spoon size shredded wheat. No, this, no, this would be these touchdowns. It's a spoon size shredded wheat covered in chocolate. Perk ups are chocolate sweetened condensed milk, vanilla extract, and chopped walnuts. Mm, these? No, those aren't really chopped. Those are more like pea. Chocolate dipped pretzels. Those crispies. 
<laughs> I'm trying to figure out, I don't know what these are, but I find them very intriguing. And I can't really figure out what each one of these is. This might be the perk ups because they're rolled in chopped walnuts. So it's essentially fudge rolled in chopped walnuts. Um, this is the chocolate dip pretzels, obviously. Crispy chocolate drops are rice krispies dipped in chocolate, which kind of looks like these, except for these are shaped like Cheerios. And I still don't know what these are maybe oh you know what maybe these are the same velvet leaps but without the pecan shoved in on the top i bet that's it because they do look otherwise very similar so i think these are the velvet leaps which is essentially a chocolatey fudge it's chocolate sour cream confectioner's sugar fine wafer crumbs vanilla extract and salt so i bet that's those and then this is those with a pecan shoved on top easy enough all of these are very, this must be the one with chopped walnuts, although it does not look like chopped walnuts. And these are the crispy chocolate drops, because this is actually not continued on another page. So none of them look like what the recipe says it is, but there you go. We figured them all out. Easter candy basket, a real grandma special, laden with candies and bows. Our candy basket is guaranteed to delight children of all ages. It really is a board like poster board and then it just has mostly bows and some candy pieces secured on it um ta a pad tied a piece of tape to the back of each candy and fold over and stick it to the basket and you can replace candies as they're eaten it says recipe exchange Ooh, this one sounds neat pink petal pie it's got Eagle brand milk. Doesn't entirely say if it's condensed or evaporated. Frozen pink lemonade concentrate, egg yolks, and a pie crust. For all the happy couples, this is the continuation of the plaque that they started. These are the details of the items that were in those eggs, including the elephant is a finger puppet. Oh, yeah, that it's a blown egg. And then you use the bot, you cut the bottom out, I guess, and you stick it in there. Dollars and cents. The high price of saying I do. If you're planning a June wedding, read this. They talk about how to save money and you can stop short of a sit down dinner, but you won't save much. Figure on $15 or $20 per guest for cocktails, cake and hors d'oeuvres only and 20 to 30 for a complete buffet. Allow at least $500 for the photographer. Now, this is an interesting thing. My entire wedding cost me less than $500. And it was more than 20 years after 1975. I had a very small wedding. We booked a state park. Um, we paid for everyone to come into the state park. And it's still my, well, the best thing was my aunt did all the food as a wedding gift. So that would have been an expense. But we did a, like, my dad cooked on his grill and it was like, it was like a barbecue. It was like a buffet, you know, macaroni salad, potato salad, that kind of stuff. And like, we did it cheap and it was nice. Um, sharing. Many young brides find making gravy that isn't lumpy a difficult task. Years ago, when I too was a young bride, my mother-in-law came to the rescue. Simply use a regular potato masher to stir when combining flour with the fat. Then there's not that problem of where to lay the greasy spoon. The potato masher can be left standing in the pan the whole time the gravy is cooking for frequent stirrings. I can't really decide if that's valid or not. I don't usually, every once in a while, I'll do something in the wrong order because I'm not thinking and I'll end up with lumpy gravy, but I don't usually have that problem. I can't really, I guess the standing it up in a pan is a valid idea. The scissors that are molded to your hand. It... I'm very curious at what point were these type of scissors kind of not available because unless you go back to the very oldest of magazines oops, sorry about that smack the camera unless you go back to the very oldest of magazines and the oldest in my collection are from like the 18 not 18 um early 1900s 
that's pretty much the only time you don't see scissors like this in a craft magazine. Like 50s, 40s, 60s, you always this molded to your hand. So they obviously go back a while. Victorian locket, only $2.98. All of these are just continued instructions. Sometimes I love these. Oh, here's a sleep learning for hypnotism. What it says, sleep learning, hypnotism, strange catalog free, auto suggestion, and the address to send for. Sometimes the marketplace sends a, has some fun ones. I was reading this. Some say we're becoming a nation of mannequins. If that's true, then pity us, because it's not so much those of us who need help who are the handicapped. It's those of us who won't give it. Have a heart, write volunteer. There's a very human need for whatever you can do. Interesting. I mean, it is true. Pretty much anything you have is helpful to somebody. Um, Baby Beet Cake claims it right, might replace the mayonnaise cake. Ah, Lawrence Welk. If you know me, you may be aware I actually really love Lawrence Welk. I've always really loved Lawrence Welk. It is a weird thing of mine. I have Lawrence Welk records. I listen to them sometimes on the weekends and just chill out. I used to watch the Lawrence Welk show when I was like a kid and a teenager. I was a teenager watching Lawrence Welk because I am a weirdo. Um, of course, the classic learn upholstery at home. You'll always see that in these. Broadway wants your poems and songs. Meanwhile, so little little bit of a trick. You'd think Broadway would be in New York. Nope, it's in Sarasota, Florida. Jet black and red hot stationery with sexy ink. Looks slimmer instant. Look thinner instantly with the slimmer belt. I love how they show these. Like she's already smaller than I am, and she's got this slimmer belt on more instructions easy to train climbing strawberries shoppers world most of these are here's a calculator holder to tilt your calculator interesting here's a word a game called cross up that actually looks kind of fun Players build words vertically, horizontally, and diagonally, played with two, three, or four people, or as a solitaire puzzle. That actually looks kind of neat. They had to pay me to show a photo of myself 14 days ago. Not now. The photos are certified unretouched. Uh, it's a big bib necklace. I, I just love the like big headlines like that. They crack me up. Flip top comb. Electronic miracle turns your house wiring into a jumbo TV antenna. I'm not going to lie. That thing like looks terrifying to me. I can't say it's safe or unsafe, but man, that looks like I don't think I could plug that in in my house. Electric curl. And then here we are, almost at the end. Roman's catalog. The slim look in large and half sizes. And then, what better way to end it for 1975 than some very serious blue eye makeup? Beautiful eyes, come rain or come shine. Here's everything you need for incredible, wettable eyes. Eye makeup that rains in the rain, won't run, smear, fade. Blooming Colors Mascara. Two great shadow shades and our pencil liner for a fine lid line. Altogether waterproof, five nice down-to-earth colors. Green, brown, plum, blue, or black. It's set to take a shine to them all. I love how they're completely color coded. Like, but that is a that is a very blue eyeball. That's a very blue. Uh, that's just a lot of blue. 
I wish I could tell you it seemed like it was off color on the camera, but it does not. So a very 1975 eye makeup ad. And that's that. The all new woman's world family crafts from April 1975. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Be sure to chat with me in the comments below about anything and everything that you found interesting in this issue. That is the point of the Friday flip. It's kind of supposed to be like we're friends and hanging out looking at magazines, but obviously we can't really do that. So this is a chance for you to tell me what you like, tell me what you dislike, tell me what your grandma had, tell me what you've made. You know, the same way I talk to you about what I've done and what this makes me think of, talk to me in the comments, chat me up. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.